All right, in this video, we're going to look at an example related to the squeeze theorem. And uh, we're going to use the squeeze theorem to evaluate these two limits. So we'll do uh, part A here first. So we want to find the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. And we're given the information that f of x is always greater than or equal to 4, and is always less than or equal to x squared plus 6x minus 3 for all values of x. Um, usually kind of the tricky part of the squeeze theorem is taking your function and bounding it below by some function, in this case a constant function, and bounding it above by another function. Here that's given to us, so it's going to make life a little bit easier. In part B, for example, though, we're going to have to have to come up with the uh, kind of the smaller and the bigger, and that'll make it a little bit trickier. But um, in this case, if you're given all this information, the idea is we can just take the limit of each part. So if we take the limit as x approaches 1 of the number 4, that's going to be, well, less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of our function f of x. And that's going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 6x minus 3. Well, the limit of a constant is just the constant. So the limit as x approaches 1 of the number 4 is going to be 4. Um, again, so that's going to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Well, again, to evaluate this limit, um, x squared plus 6x minus 3, again, that's a nice little parabola. It's continuous everywhere. So all we have to do is simply plug in our value. If we plug in 1, we would get 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 3. So again, we've got 4 is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. And well, let's see, so 1 squared is 1. 6 times 1 is going to give us, uh, so 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. OK, well, it says the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x has to be greater than or equal to 4. But it also has to be less than or equal to 4. Well, that would imply that the limit as x approaches 1 of our function is simply going to equal the number 4. Okay, So again, what you're kind of doing is you're deducing information about uh, the limit of some function by knowing information about you know a function that's smaller than it and a function that's larger than it. So uh, kind of an uh, uh, indirect way to get information about the original function.